This is Finished Work TV, a place of inspiration, wisdom, and revelation. As you listen and receive God's Word today, your life will never remain the same. And God wants you to understand the place where your purpose is connected. Pastoring with purpose. The call to the pastoral ministry is the call to transform lives. Is the call to empower people to manifest and express the God life. It is a call to inspire people to manifest the will of God. The reality of that comes into manifestation when we understand purpose. There is a place, there are people, and there is a purpose. There's a place where your ministry is connected to. A lot of people could hear the, the testimony of another preacher or someone who is in ministry, maybe told them, man, the city where I'm doing ministry, things are working out, things are flourishing. And some ministers have the attitude of quickly running into that city or going to that city because they felt this other minister is becoming successful in that city. We pastor by divine direction. We pastor by divine direction. It is God who decides the direction that your ministry should be going. It is God who decides the people he is sending you to. It is wrong for you to send yourself to a place God hasn't sent you to. It is wrong for you to commence a ministry, a ministry assignment in a neighborhood God never gave you a word for. And sometimes we come out unfruitful, our work come out very frustrating, it becomes challenging, and we may think that God is not with us. No, God is with us. It's just that we are not in the right place. So to pastor with purpose, we must also understand there is a location for that purpose. There is a location for God's purpose for your ministry. There is a location for God's purpose for your ministry. And understanding the location is important in the pursuit of the vision. Understanding the location. What is the location of his assignment? Let's look at Jonah as a case study. Uh, Jonah chapter, you know, the word of the Lord came to Jonah the prophet and uh, he decided to do what he wanted to do. And look at his scripture, in Jonah chapter one, verse one, he said, the Lord gave a message to Jonah. The Lord gave a message to Jonah. He said, get up and go to the great city of Nineveh. Announce my judgment against it because I have seen how wicked its people are. God was given an assignment to Jonah, but Jonah got up and went in opposite direction. And this is where we have the problem sometimes in ministry. God is calling you to go to Michigan to pastor, or God is calling me to go to Lagos, Abuja, or Canada, or Australia. But there is a neighborhood I'm comfortable with. There is a place I am comfortable with. A place you're comfortable with may not be the place of your assignment. And also the place you're comfortable with may be the place of your assignment, depending on what God is telling you or what the Spirit of God is revealing to you as a person. There is a place where your giftings your anointing, your charisma will be fruitful. There is a place where your gifting, your anointing, your charisma will be fruitful. There is a place. 
There is a place where your gifting, your calling, your charisma will be fruitful. Now, the Lord gave a word to Jonah for Nineveh. I wanted to go to the city of Nineveh. That is where your, your, your prophetic ministry is needed. This is where your prophetic assignment will be needed. When God gives you an instruction, he expects obedience as a reward of that instruction you have heard. When God gives you an instruction, he expects obedience as the reward of the instruction you have received. But we saw that Jonah couldn't follow up. One of the reasons for frustration in ministry, in business, in life, is when we neglect the will of God, when we despise the will of God, when we choose to do things our way. When we choose, I, I can decide to do things my way. I can decide to allow how I feel or the subjection of people to decide my vision or to decide my direction or to allow my emotional situation to decide how I respond. The church is mine. But the will of God is that I walk in obedience towards what he's revealing to me. What God is revealing to you is more important than how you feel, than what you think, than the opinion and the subjection that people will bring your way. Here he said, get up and go to the great city of Nineveh and announce my judgment against it. I'm reading from the NLT. Because I've seen the great wicked, I've seen how great, I'm sorry, I've seen how wicked its people are. But Jonah got up and went in opposite direction to get away from the Lord. And sometimes we can read this and say, you know, I've heard so many Christians say things like, don't carry Jonah in your boat or let Jonah not be in your life, you know, things like that. But the truth be told, some Christians behave like Jonah. They behave like Jonah. Why? Because God told them to do something, but they're going opposite direction. God asked them to stay connected to a ministry, to a person, to a place, but they want to do things their way. You see, the reason for Jonah's frustration, not because God is not a merciful God, but Jonah never expected God to say that. He thought God could have mentioned another city or another place or maybe somewhere that would be more good for him, but not Nineveh. He never liked the place. He doesn't want to go to the place. He was not happy with the place. Sometimes in ministry, God sends us to a place that we don't like. You are not called to like. You are called to obey. You are not called to, you must like this person before you do what God asks you to do for them. Maybe God is asking you, go be a blessing to this person. Go be an encouragement. He said, I don't like them. That is not what God is asking. He's not talking about you liking them or not. The most important thing is the instruction given to you. God gives you an instruction with an intention that you walk in obedience. Knowing the place, knowing the people, and understanding the purpose is foundational for pastoring. Knowing the place, knowing the people, understanding the purpose is foundational for effective pastoring. The place, the people, the purpose, these three things you need to understand it. The place, the people, the purpose. If you don't understand any of this, it will be difficult for you to carry out the will of God in a such a way that God will be glorified. Why? Because God wants me to understand what he has called me to do. What he has anointed me to do. He wants me to follow up. He wants me to stay committed to it. You know, uh, let me just give an illustration with my life. Several years ago, I, I stayed in the city of Port Harcourt in 
in River State, Nigeria. And in that city of Portancourt, I live in a neighborhood they call Diob. And my parents raised me in that Diob neighborhood. And uh, many years later, when I came into ministry, there's another neighborhood we call town. Another neighborhood we call Borokiri. And the Spirit of God begins to lead me to go to town, to do ministry. Now, I, I don't know much people in town. I didn't grow up in town. But that is the place of the assignment. Now, because I never grew up in that neighborhood, I have this, I could have told God, I can go there. Our problem begins when we start making the decision instead of being led by the Spirit. When we start making the decision by ourselves, we don't want to be led by the Spirit of God. You, you, I don't like this place. I don't like this neighborhood. That is not what God is asking you. God's purpose for your ministry can only come to pass when you choose to be in the place of obedience. God's purpose for your ministry will only come to pass when you choose to be in the place of obedience. The place of obedience is the place of strength. So, I just listened to what God was telling me. And I followed that instruction and came to that time. I had no money. I had no people. The only thing I had was the word of God. There was no money. There was no people. But God said, go there. Your assignment can only be fruitful when the assignment came from God. If God leads you into it, God will help you with it. If God leads you into it, there are a lot of people doing something that God never led them into it. A lot of people doing something that God has not led them into it. He, he never led them into it. They feel like this area is, has, has economic value. Truth be told, there are pastors who plant churches based on economic benefits. If the place is a very poor neighborhood, a very poor region, they don't want to plant their churches there. But, but if God is saying go there, it means he's willing to provide for it. And that is why in pastoring, Three key things are very important. Purpose, people, place. What is the purpose? The people, the place. And if you don't understand this, it will be difficult for you to interact with the plan of God. All oh, these people are so poor. All oh, these people are so broke. I can't be here. It's a broke neighborhood. The people are poor people. They don't have the resources. No. If God said to you, go to that poor neighborhood and do ministry, it means he's willing to help you with the bills, with the needs, were the challenges to do the ministry. But Jonah never saw the picture. All Jonah was seeing was himself. He wasn't seeing the picture of God. All Jonah was seeing that I can't do this. I can't handle this. I'm not willing to do this. 
That is all Jonah is saying. And that is what happens most times to people. God tells them, support this person. Pray for this person. Stay connected to this person. Stay connected to this ministry. Go push this person. Encourage this person. And sometimes God tells us those things. And then the people have an attitude. And they say, why, why will you tell me to encourage this man? Or encourage this woman? Look at our attitude. God is not telling you to look at the attitude. God is telling you to focus on what he asks you to do. And sometimes, difficult people are in your life to bring out the best of God in you if you will listen to the Holy Spirit. Sometimes, difficult people are in your life. They're in your life to bring out the best in you. You cannot say you're a patient person until what will require you to show it comes. What will require you to show patience haven't come? And then you say you're a patient person. How? How? <laughs> what will make you show the patience haven't come? You say, oh, I'm a very kind person. What will prove your kindness hasn't come? For everything you say you can do, the, thing that, the things that will prove it will come. And then we want to see how you'll be able to handle those things. How you'll be able to, to marry those things. How are you going to be able to marry those things? How are you going to be able to take care of those things, those situations? How? It takes the wisdom of God to prevail in the purpose of God. It takes the wisdom of God to stay connected to God's intentions. It takes the wisdom of God for you to enforce the will of God irrespective of how you feel or the things you go through. It takes the will of God. If I don't have the knowledge of his will, I will betray his will for my life. Ignorance and deception can lead to betrayal. Ignorance and deception can lead to betrayal. Yeah, why am I saying this? Because a lot of people, well, with the assignment, you would have done lives, but ignorance affected them. Ignorance affected them. They could have done well. But ignorance affected their calling. Ignorance affected their purpose. Ignorance affected their agenda. And can I say this to you? Whenever God asks you to do something, the blessing has already been released on it. Whenever God asks you to do something, the blessing is already released on it. Obedience is the key. Obedience. You know, when the Lord spoke to me to do this meeting for these 120 days, someone told me that, Apostle, what are you trying to do? This is not fun. How are you going to do this? But when God gives you an instruction, what do you expect is obedience? And then he will help you. Not only with the finances, also with the, with the revelation required to keep teaching for 120 days. Because you need revelation. You need inspiration from the Spirit. You need understanding. You need the wisdom of God to be in place to enable you impact people that whenever you come, you're bringing direction to people. In obedience, we experience provision. In obedience, we experience protection. In obedience, we experience divine assistance. So look at what Jonah did. The Bible said here, remember we're talking about pastoring with purpose, and we're looking at purpose, we're looking at people, we're looking at place. And our case study is Jonah. 
And in Jonah chapter 1, verse 3, it says, But Jonah got up and went in opposite direction to get away from the Lord. He went down to the port of Joppa, where he found a ship leaving for Tarshish. He bought, he bought a ticket and went on board. Now listen. This is God's money. This, this, this God provided for Jonah. But Jonah was using God's money for what is not God's purpose. <laughs> Hallelujah. Jonah decided to pay his way to a different direction. But, but that was not the will of God. The will of God is Nineveh. The will of God was to go to Nineveh. But Jonah never saw the big picture. Your reward will be found in the place of obedience. Your reward will be found in the place of obedience. Your reward will be found in the place of obedience. The place of obedience is where you unlock supernatural reward. God told you, stay there. Come on, you stay there. Don't worry about what people say, gossip you, make a mockery of you. Maybe your spouse, your friend, your mother, your wife, your children, your colleague, people in your city may be saying something against what God has spoken to you. Don't give up on God's plan for your life. I'm a living witness that if you follow God, he's going to help you. If you stay with God, he's going to come true for you. Understanding the place of your purpose is the key to releasing your potential. Understanding the place of your purpose is the key to releasing your potential. Understanding the place of your purpose. To understand the place of your purpose, you need to be able to stay connected to what God is saying. You stay connected to what God is saying. You can't release your purpose. You can't release your potential outside your purpose and expect to be rewarded for it. You can only release your potential within your purpose, then you can expect reward. That's why it works in ministry. That God told you something, you stare at it. If you're not, your gifting will flourish in the neighborhood of your purpose. Your gifting will flourish in the neighborhood of your purpose. Your gifting will flourish in the neighborhood of your purpose. That's where your gifting will flourish. That's where you, you begin to impact your world. You begin to change your world. You begin to transform lives. You start impacting lives. You start giving meaning to life. You start giving direction to life. And God is calling us to a place of purpose. And the discovery of your purpose is the starting point of the release of your greatness. The discovery of your purpose is the starting point of the release of your greatness. If I'm going to release the greatness in me, I need to understand my purpose. My purpose may be to stand with someone here. That's what God has come to do. So this person is your assignment. Make sure, and, and can I say this to you? One of the greatest things to do is to do what God instructed you to do. One of the greatest things to do is to do what God instructed you to do. That's, that's one of the greatest things to do, is to do what God has instructed you to do. And, and look at how Jonah got into trouble. 
And there are many preachers and people of God today getting into trouble like Jonah because they are moving towards the direction of the wrong location. They want to do what they want to do, but they don't want to do what God instructed them to do. What God instructed you to do is what will lead to supernatural harvest. And I'm here this morning to say to someone, don't be like Jonah. Just listen. Don't be like Jonah. Just, just follow God. Your ways won't take you to your destination. But God's word will take you to your destination. Your ways won't take you there. Your ways won't take you there. I'm telling you, you know, I've pastored for a very long time now. And I could tell someone, don't do this, do this. Because by experience, I've learned so many things. I've learned that God can only prosper you where he finds you. I've learned. I've learned that the things that prosper are the things you are instructed to do. I've learned that. I've learned that you cannot go ahead of God. I've learned there are different seasons of ministry and life. I've learned that it takes time for big things to happen. I've learned that. I've learned that it takes time to grow a great ministry. I've learned that. I've learned that God will be patient with you until you get it before he moves you to the next level. I've learned that. I've also learned that most of that are wrong, that are not doing well today, if you're patient with them, most of them can do well later and help you in ministry. I've learned that. I've learned that most people you are bitter with right now, if you walk in love, God will heal them alongside with you. I understand that. I understand that when you stand with a man of God and keep supporting him, you are also supporting your own destiny and your own life. I've understood that. I've also understood that it is good to let go issues that are matters that are like issues of offense, unforgiveness, and bitterness for the sake of your health. I've understood that. I've understood that you can't do ministry for a long time without being insulted, without being abused by people, I've understood that. So I make room for compassion, I make room for love, I make room for forgiveness, I've understood that. If you can't make room for compassion, for love, and for forgiveness, you're not qualified to do ministry. Ministry is for people that have hearts of God, for God's people. You need to have the God kind of heart for God's people. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. This is all we can take for this class this morning. I'll be back again tomorrow to continue pastoring with purpose. And I believe that the Spirit of God will teach us a lot of things. I'd like you to keep praying for me and also believe in what we're doing. I also want to encourage people to consider partnering with this ministry. You can do that by going to finishwhattv.com or you can go to teaching at gmail.com. And also you can subscribe to our YouTube. Most of the classes are on Faithman Teachings on YouTube. You can follow some of the classes you've missed and take some notes to improve and move forward. also want to encourage you to tell others about these classes, to invest in the lives of people. The beauty of faith is when we share it. The, the glory of faith is when we share it. When we share our faith with others, it opens the door for more. Thank you for being part of this broadcast. I'll see you tomorrow. Don't forget this. There is greatness in you. 